today i am showing you two patients one this one seven years old kid and the other is a 10 years old kid and both have got the same problem now first this patient uh, this patient was brought to me with complaints of the inward deviation of the right eye after he was slapped in his face during a children fight in the street a week ago i asked the patient that before that incident eyes were straight are you sure and they said yes there was no history of fever nausea vomiting neck stiffness the vision was 6 6 which also tells that the uh, deviation is recent of recent onset i asked him about double vision I asked from the patient that whether you see double or not but the child was unable to express it so as we have got deviation it is strabismus and broadly it is divided into committent which is also called non paralytic and incommittent which is called paralytic so we performed extra ocular movements in all position of gazes and there was complete restriction of the right lateral rectus which confirmed that the patient is having paralytic squid and there was a history of trauma positive so i diagnosed him as a case of right traumatic six nerve palsy other properties of the paralytic squints are sudden onset history of trauma double vision abnormal head posture deviation increase in the direction of the affected muscle and is minimal in the direction opposite to the action of the affected muscle fundus examination is very important because in a raised intracranial pressure six nerve palsy is a false localizing sign also other cranial nerves should be examined to confirm whether isolated or multiple nerves are affected so it was an obvious case with positive trauma history mostly i have seen patients with traumatic six nerve palsy uh, in children who fell from the bed during sleep so the next patient which is a 10 years old kid who presented to me with a fall from the bed during sleep and he developed six nerve palsy now look at this patient look at the posture abnormal head posture with face turned towards the right face turned towards the right now this patient he has got diplopia and in order to avoid diplopia he has adopted this abnormal head posture and the face turn so in a six nerve palsy the head uh, face turn is towards the side of the palsy to avoid diplopia so in management uh, we first of all we treat diplopia by patching or giving prisms as temporary measures and wait for the recovery in the first patient there was no need of patching because there was no diplopia but in this patient the patient had diplopia so we advised patching and then follow up so the end and deviation is usually more for distance as compared to the near that is also a feature of the six nerve palsy face turn is always towards the side of palsy like in this patient he has got right traumatic six nerve palsy now as both uh, first patient was seven years old and this patient is 10 years old so visual development is complete if he if one of the patient was a three or four years old then you can do alternate patching to protect amblyopia so in our patients uh, there was no chance of amblyopia both have got good vision 6 6 vision now another modality is botulinum toxin injection into the medial rectus uh, it will temporarily resolve the extreme deviation it will improve the abnormal face turn and will give time for spontaneous recovery of the paralytic muscle surgery is done when we are 
confirm that no further improvement is possible usually after 9 to 12 months of the injury and ideally when two HES tests are uh, three months apart they show no further improvement no further changes so after that time mostly patients either get full recovery or partial recovery and squint reduces in magnitude so if partial function is there we can do horizontal recession and resection procedure to reduce the squint further if no improvement at all occurs and there is a complete loss of function of the lateral rectus then we do transposition procedure in a transposition we split the inferior rectus and superior rectus into half and attach half uh, both half lateral halves with lateral rectus muscle so some movement is regained at least the eye becomes straight in the primary position <coughs> So that was all about the traumatic sixth nerve palsy and I, uh, I hope after watching this uh, you will be able to diagnose and manage the traumatic sixth nerve palsy. Thank you very much.